Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about chapter 6, which in your textbook is Compute Statements. Uh, but really we're going to focus in this lecture on understanding z-scores. So we start with the normal curve. You probably remember the normal curve from your statistics lecture class. The normal curve looks like this here on your right side of your screen. Um, it is symmetrical, meaning that if you drew a line right down the middle, the left side and the right side of the curve are mirror images of each other. Also, because it's symmetrical, if you drew this line right down the middle, 50% of the cases would be below the mean and 50% of the cases would be above the mean. Because this is a normal curve, right at the middle, this highest point of the normal curve, are the mean, median, and mode. They are all the same thing in a normal curve. So when you find the mean, it's the same as the median, it's the same as the mode. And this normal curve has some precise mathematical functions that we use um, in order to do a lot of our inferential statistics. So let's talk for a minute about raw scores. If somebody gets a raw score, which is just a score on any kind of test or uh, quiz or assessment or anything, um, it's hard to know how that score compares with other values. For example, if I said to you, I got a 53 on my Spanish test, say I'm taking a Spanish class, you don't know what that means. Um, it might be a low score. Maybe I got 53 out of 150. It might be an average score. It might be a really high score. Maybe I got 53 out of 55. But you really don't know if I just tell you, hey, I got a 53, and we're not talking about percent. We're just talking about points on a scale of some sort. It's hard to know what that really means. But if you transform a raw score into what we call a z-score or a standard score, then all of a sudden you know a lot of information. The z-score tells you exactly where the score is located relative to all the other scores in the distribution. So z-scores are extremely helpful. Um, here we are back to our normal curve. This one is now called a standardized normal curve, meaning we've taken every score and we've standardized it. We've turned them into z-scores. And I'm going to show you how we do that in just a second. But your standardized normal curve is still the same shape of a normal distribution. Um, it's based on a theoretical, um, it's a theoretical curve based on if you tested an infinite number of cases, if you continued to test and test and test, um, which we never do, but this is a a mathematical theoretical um, curve. But when you do transform your values into z scores in a standardized normal curve, the mean is always zero. You see that here? The mean is always zero in terms of z scores. Any point, any score above the mean will be a positive number, and you can see that. If you got a score above the mean, you would end up with a z-score that is positive. If someone got a z uh, scored below the mean, their z-score would be negative. And as I said, the mean is always zero, and the standard deviation when we um, transform our scores into z-scores will be one. So at this point, at plus one, you know we are one standard deviation above the mean. Over here at this point, a z-score of plus 2 means we are two standard deviations above the mean. If we're over here at negative 3, that's telling us that this score was three standard deviations below the mean. So a z-score reflects how many standard deviations above or below the mean a raw score is. And as I said, if the z-score is positive, then we know that person scored above the mean. And if the z-score is negative, then that person scored below the mean. So if you have a score that is one standard deviation above the mean, you know their z-score is going to be positive 
and a z-score of positive 0.1 always means that somebody scored one standard deviation above the mean. So if we're thinking about the data, uh, you have a group of data that's normally distributed, meaning that it falls in a normal curve, and the mean is 45. So the average is 45. Remember, imagine having that normal curve and the mean, that highest point, is 45. If somebody gets a score of 60, will the z-score be positive or negative? Think about this for a second to yourself. If the mean is 45 and somebody gets a score of 60, these are raw scores. If we transform them into z-scores, would this score of 60 be positive or negative? Hopefully you think it will be positive, and it will be because 60 is above the mean of 45. It's falling, I'm just going to go back here for a second. If the mean is 45, and this is, would be raw score points, then 60 is somewhere over here. It's higher than the mean, and so we know they would have a positive z-score. Okay, so how do you transform raw scores into z-scores? You're not going to really need to do this for this class. SPSS will do it for you, but just so you can tell what we're doing, the formula for a z-score is to take whatever score somebody gets x. So if I took my Spanish test and I got that 53, minus mu, meaning the mean in the population, over the standard deviation, sigma standard deviation. So it's the score minus the mean over the standard deviation gets you a z-score. Now if you could pull, pull out a calculator or a cell phone that has a calculator on it, um, let's take a look at how you would do some of this computation. So you don't even probably need a calculator for this one. But suppose SAT scores among college students are normally distributed with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. If a student gets a 700, what would her z-score be? So thinking back to that formula, a z-score is equal to the person's score, which in this case is 700, minus the mean, which is 500, divided by the standard deviation, which is 100. So 700 minus 500 over 100. If you do that, 700 minus 500 divided by 100, that gives us a z-score of 2. What is a z-score of 2? Well, it's a positive number. It's positive 2. So we know that her score is 2 standard deviations above the mean. And again, that's helpful because if we just said, hey, I got a 700 on my SAT, we don't really know what that means. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. But a z-score of 2 tells us that this person scored two standard deviations above the mean. That's really good. She should be very proud of herself. Here's one more, if you would, try to compute for a second. Let's say you took a math test and an English test. Your math test had a mean of 700 and a standard deviation of 8. For the English test, this, that test had a mean of 74 and a standard deviation of 16. Suppose you got a 78 on both tests. You got a 78 on your math test and you got a 78 on your English test. The question is, which one should you be prouder of? Which on which test did you do better relative to the other students in the class? So in order to do this, you're going to have to calculate two z-scores, one for a score of 78 with, for math test, which had a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 8, and another z-score for your English test, which again, you got a 78 with the mean of 74 and a standard deviation of 16. So if you'd make, compute those two z-scores for one second, pause it here if you need to, then we would solve for the z-score for each test. So the math z-score was 78 minus 70 over the standard devi deviation of 8, which is a z-score of 1. 
For English, your score was still 78 minus the mean of 74 over the standard deviation of 16, which is a z-score of positive 0.25. So which of these tests should you be happier about, your score? Well, what is a z-score of 1? In this case, you scored one standard deviation above the mean. For the English test, you scored 0.25 standard deviations above the mean. So in each case, you scored above the mean, but you should be happier with your math test because you were a whole standard deviation above the mean. Versus English, you were only a quarter of a standard deviation above the mean. So you did better in math than in English, even though you had the same raw score. And this is why z-scores are important. They allow us to compare different scores on different tests with different scales. We can transform any score into a z-score, and then we can make the comparisons in these standard deviation units. That's why we call z-scores a standardized measure, because it standardizes um, any score, whether it be how fast you ran a race, um, your score on an English test, your height, um, anything, we can transform into a z-score and then be able to compare on this standardized scale of standard deviation units. And that's that. All right. Thank you very much.